What's up everybody? We're back doing another video. So it's time to replace some brakes. That's what we're going to be doing today. Um, I'm going to tell you I've never replaced brakes before, but I feel like I've done my research and I've watched a bunch of videos and I think we can do it. So here's what we're going to be doing. I, you know, look, the Brembro brakes that come with the car are good brakes. I like the Brembros. They actually work really well. They stop well, they perform well. But I gotta tell you, the Grand Sport Brembos are so dusty, it is actually painful. I clean the car, I detail the car, the car's ceramic. I love keeping the car clean. I take it out for a 20 minute drive and I come back and the wheels are completely covered in brake dust. And so anybody that has a Grand Sport or any Corvette, uh, the more recent C7s, and you have the Brembos, doesn't matter if it's a Stingray with a Z51 package or a Z06, you know that the Brembos are extremely dusty. So what we're going to be doing, we are going to be upgrading to Hawk Performance. I got the Performance Ceramics, and um, I'm actually really excited about these because these are very, very good brakes. I've done my research, and uh, these are awesome. And they're going to do well, you know. They might not be... And I don't know, they may be performing at the same exact level, but even if they're not, they're, even if they're just a smidge off, just the fact that I'm gonna have that less, less brake dust, it's gonna mean that this was worth it because, you know, I'm not taking the car on the track, I just enjoy it on the weekends. And uh, yeah, I drive it pretty hard sometimes, I have fun with it, but you know, I'm not spending all day at the track. So for me, if I can make my life easier by having less brake dust, then I'm all for it. So let me show you the ones I got here. I got, okay, the um, rear brakes are the HB727Z.592. And the front brakes are the HB646Z.605. And these are the performic, performance ceramic brakes. Um, so very very excited to put these in. I'll definitely keep you guys posted on uh, How they perform after I put them in But um, you know, I'm all set up. I'm gonna be getting things going here. I'm just gonna take it one step at a time Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna literally just jack up one wheel at a time It's probably gonna take me a couple hours to do But you know what the hell? I got the time, it's really not that difficult. I'll kind of show you guys the steps um, to, to doing it and we'll go through it together. And after that, you know, I gotta, you know, take it out on the road and uh, see how it performs. So, take you along for the ride. All right, so I got the car jacked up. Now, when you, all right, so when you're jacking up a Corvette C7, you got to make sure that you use a low profile jack. I got a three ton jack here. You got to also make sure that you find the right jack point. I'm going to show that to you guys right here. Hopefully you can see this. But right here I have a puck. And I would definitely recommend buying this puck. It sits right on the jack pad. Okay, and then you can jack it up right at this point. It goes right in. It, you turn it and it locks into place. And then you use this jack and it'll pop it right up. And so you can see that we've got, we've got enough clearance to take the wheel off and get going. All right, so we got the wheel off. Now we just need to take out a few pins, two pins and one basically a bolt. And that's it, so let me show you. So 
Let me see. I don't know if that's uh, too dark for you guys to see. But this pin right here is going to come out. This pin right here is going to come out. And this bolt is going to come out. Okay, which is going to then release this bracket. And it's just as simple as that. Now this is a 13 millimeter back here. So all you need is a simple socket wrench. Come back here. We're going to take this guy off. And then we're going to tap these pins out. And then I'll show you where we're at. Alright, so I just wanted to show you guys that to take these uh, pins out right here and right here. Um, I'm going to use this punch, but it's hollow uh, on the end. Hopefully, hopefully you can see that. I'm not sure that's going to come into focus there, but the tip of this is a little hollowed out and that's going to allow me just to kind of line it right up and then tap this out. Uh, but as you can see, this has already got um, some damage on it. I'm going to try to clean this up, but you know, there's some missing paint here and some missing paint here. Uh, I guess that's from road debris or driving or rocks or what have you. Um, probably from the previous owner or just uh, wear and tear. But the front looks pretty good and this inside piece looks pretty good. Alright, so once you get to this point and you've got your two pins and you got this bolt taken out, taken off, it should just come right out. You just might have to press, you gotta press it a little bit. Alright, but there you go. So you can see still plenty of pad left on these guys. But um, there we go, Mr. Dust. One out, and then we're gonna take this off. So just press them back a little bit. Press them back, compress those calipers. And you got three calipers, one on each side, three on each side rather. Okay, there they are. They're out. The Brembos are out. So that's it. All right, so we got the brakes out. Now we're gonna go ahead and put the brakes in, the new brakes. These Hawks, or Hawk Performance, looking good, I like them. So we're gonna put a little bit of grease on here at the very top on each ends. And then I put a little grease here, not too much, nothing crazy, just a little bit. And that's where the three pistons are gonna go. And then uh, we're gonna go ahead and slide them in and see if they go right in or maybe they require a little bit of finesse so let's uh, let's find out all right they're going to require a little bit of finesse so what we're going to do is we got a little pry bar here and we're gonna just gonna pry the um, pistons try to push them back a little bit push them in just a little bit because I don't know if you guys can see that I might be in your way but the pistons hold on a second all right the pistons are popping out a little bit so what we want to do is obviously try to push those back in a little bit and then now, let them push back in. Let's see if that helps. Ah, much easier. Much easier. That slides right in. Okay. So let's go ahead and do the same thing on the other side. All right, guys. So, um, so for this, I had a little, uh, <clears throat> I had a little, I guess, difficulty getting this break in. But the bottom line is, it was my error one of the pistons the very very bottom piston was still pushed out a little bit and i just needed to come in with my uh, pry bar just push that piston in gently and then it just slides in with no problem so then again put the bolt back in so just doing it in reverse putting the bolt back in uh, you tighten this down to tighten this down to about 22 torque it to, to 22 pounds put a little loctite on this 
And then, you know, you just line up your bracket, put the bottom pin in, put a little tension, put the top bracket in, and then you're going to see your pin sticking out here. And I just have like a nice soft hammer here. Just go ahead and tap this in. And you're going to see this starting to come out. There you go. And that's nice. So as soon as you see, there you go. Now, once you see that sort of uh, tapered end starting to come out, you're pretty much good to go. Okay, then same thing on the bottom. Just give it, oh, there you go. There's a better view. And you're just tapping this in. You can see this starting to come out. There you go. And it comes out nice on the tapered end. One more tap for good measure. There you go. Nice, nice. Everything's in there snug. Bolts in there solid. There we go. Brakes are replaced on that uh, front wheel. So, uh, so I'm definitely looking forward to the upgrade. Get rid of all that dust that uh, happens to be sort of a, an issue with the Brembos. And then I'll let you guys know how the performance is. But I'm definitely excited to have these Hawk pads on. I would definitely recommend them. I mean, I've done a ton of research on these. These are great pads, great product, low dust, good stopping, but uh, I will give you feedback here shortly. So let me wrap this up and put these on. All right, so I got the front brakes done and moving on to the rear. I just wanted to show you a couple things. Um, you are gonna need, if you're gonna take this job on, you need definitely need this pry bar. Um, this pry bar, I got this at Harbor Freight. I mean, these are super cheap, but the only struggle you're really going to have doing this brake job, and it is really the easiest brake job there is to do, the only struggle you're going to have is taking the new brake pads and putting it in the slot where the old brake pads were. But the, the only thing you're really running into is the pistons. The pistons are sticking out a little bit, and so when they protrude out, you can't. there's not enough room for the new brake pad to slide in. So the easiest thing to do is literally just take this plastic pry bar and pry that put, you know, gently push the piston in and you're good, you're, you're, you're good after that point. And now as far as the tapping out some of the pins, um, you're definitely going to need a punch. Now this is a 1 8 punch. You're going to need a punch like this for the rear because the rear, if you look right here, the rear brakes are a little bit different. Let me try not to create a shade here. But the rear brakes are a little bit different, so there's no bolt that goes in here. There's only two pins, one pin here and one pin here. And so the only thing you need to do <clears throat> is just take a 1 8 punch and you just punch it right out. It's just as easy as that. Punch this one out, punch this one out, the spring comes off, clean it up, take the pads out, take the pry bar, Okay, pry, pry the, the pistons, push the pistons back in. You're gonna slide it right back in, and then you're done, and then just reverse the job. So um, I just took the wheel off. I'm gonna take this one uh, apart and put it together, and we're gonna be uh, rocking and rolling. All right, so I just went ahead and punched this out, punched that out, took the spring off, and now try to push the brakes, push the brakes against the pistons, the pads, that'll slide out very easily. Okay, again, same thing on this side, just pull towards you to push against the pistons, and there you go. That's all she wrote. Um, So we're just going to take a little bit of this grease here. Just put some on your finger. Now this is um, really important to note. The, the low brake pad indicator on the rear brakes, and this is uh, actually pretty important. The front brakes, both brake pads have a low pad indicator, but with the rear pads, only the outside brake pad has the indicator, okay? And that's going to sit in there like this. The one that sits on the inside does not have an indicator. So you just take this, 
put a little bit on here, not too much, nothing crazy. All right, put a little bit on there, nothing crazy. Okay, just put a little bit there. <clears throat> Thing here, just put a little bit on there, a little bit on here. All right, now this grease, by the way, this comes with the Hawk package. So the everything you know comes in here that you need. The brakes and the grease all comes in here. It's good to go. And you know, after I put the brakes on. Then they actually have instructions <clears throat> on how to burnish in the brakes, which is actually very important. Um, burnishing the brakes is where you basically mat the brake pads to the rotors, and that's a very important step. So, all right, so this, this is our outside piece. So let's see if this guy slides in there. Boom, nice and easy. This is going to be our inside brake. Again, no indicator warning uh, on this. Let's slide that. Let's see if that slides in there. All right, so this one is giving us a little bit of static. I can definitely feel that it's hitting the caliper. So what we're going to do, is get this handy dandy thing. And we're just going to push. Just gonna gently push this. Okay, we're gently push that piston right back in. And this should now nope, still running into a little bit of an issue there. Let's figure this out. again. There you go. All right. So again, this, <clears throat> this is a very important tool to have when replacing your brakes because, you know, you don't want to use something that's steel or, you know, a screwdriver or something like that um, because you obviously don't want to mar the calipers. Um, you definitely don't want to mess up uh, the rotor. So this is just a really easy tool. It's nice, not too abrasive, and uh, Harbor Freight, pretty inexpensive. Definitely recommend that. So, all right, so now I'm just gonna clean up the pin and the springs, and we're gonna throw it right back on. Cleaned up, you're gonna put these two pins and the spring back in. Again, it's a pretty straightforward process. Just gonna come back here, and line it up. Add a little pressure to pull the spring back. And that's going to slide right in there. All right, now you just got to tap this in. Now it's a little tight, a little tight back there, but it's not too bad. And again, I would recommend using a hammer with a soft top. You don't want to damage the uh, caliper of course so but before you start tapping you do want to make sure that the pins are aligned properly and then once they are you just give it a little tap So I just got back from burnishing the brakes in, and it was easy, simple, great. They stopped great. I mean, honestly, I, for me, there's no discernible difference at all between the Brembo's that it came with and the Hawk Performance 
brakes that I just put on. So I can tell you that that's the first time I've ever put brakes on a car. It took me two and a half hours. If you knew what you were doing and you were just confident, you could definitely roll with it in probably an hour and a half. But I mean, look, I had one jack. I jacked up each tire one at a time. Didn't even use jack stands, just put up one tire at a time. Did the whole job in two and a half hours. It was easy and I would highly, highly recommend the Hawk Performance brakes. Uh, definitely a big shout out to, to Hawk. It's a great product and uh, you know, look, I drove around, just got back from about a 30, 45 minute drive and the performance, honestly, there was absolutely no discernible difference. Now, you know, if you took them out on a track and you drove around for two hours, maybe there'd be a difference. I don't really know, but to me, I'm not taking them out on a track, so you know, for me, just having some fun on the weekends and driving it, you know, pretty hard, uh, just in some back roads, and they're going to work perfectly fine for me. So, definitely recommend Hawk Performance brake pads. And uh, that's all I got. I'll see you guys next time. Mm -hmm.